Batman, Year One. One night, many years ago, in Gotham City, Thomas Wayne and his wife Martha were walking to their car with their young son Bruce. They had just come from the movies. Bruce was chatting away about how he wants to see the Mark of Zorro again. As they turn a corner to their car, they are met by a hooded gunman. They struggle before two gunshots go off. Bruce is left there, alone, with his lifeless parents on the sidewalk. Twenty years later, Bruce Wayne is now 28 and quite dynamic. He has traveled the world, training for a war on crime to avenge his parents' deaths. He is at the Ludlow International Airport where his butler, Alfred, picks him up. The two drive to Wayne Manor, just outside of Gotham. Bruce watches the city from the distance. Welcome home, Master Bruce. And how long are you staying this time? I'm back for good, Alfred. Travels are done, at least for the foreseeable future. The executives at Wayne Enterprises will be relieved to hear that. There's much to do at your father's company. Actually, I've got something else in mind. Cut through here. Here? Are you sure, sir? I need to see the enemy. Hmm, the enemy. Well, as you can glean from the view, Gotham has been through quite a lot in your absence. Crime, corruption. Not for long. I'm ready to begin. I shall refrain from celebration until I know what you are ready to begin. Well, I'm sure you didn't think all I did was drop out of school and date supermodels the last few years. And live like a normal celebrity. I shudder to think. I made a promise to my parents that I would rid the city of the evil that took their lives. It's time I fulfill that promise. I know you don't approve. Master Bruce, you've spent 12 years preparing for what you are about to do. I won't attempt to dissuade you. But I beseech you, be careful. A few nights later, Bruce decides to begin his war on crime. He slips through the shadows of downtown Gotham, wearing a hockey mask and black clothes. He gets into a fight that leaves him wounded and bleeding badly. He escapes to a rotting building and contemplates whether or not to continue his crusade on crime. Just then, a screech fills the area and a bat dives at him, knocking him into an old chair. In that moment, Bruce realizes his destiny. He gets to work. He builds his costume, his cape, his gadgets. Then finally, one more important item. He slams down a hammer on scrap metal, molding it into shape. As he hammers away, the shape becomes more and more clear. A cowl of metal with bat ears. Two months later, there is another man in Gotham City that is also waging war on crime. His name is Captain James Gordon. 
he's just successfully arrested a maniac that kidnapped three girls. Back at Gotham Police Headquarters, his superior, Commissioner Gillian Loeb, doesn't seem pleased, however. Loeb is corrupt as corrupt can be. Working with Gotham's top mob boss, Carmine Falcone, also known as the Roman. The Roman catches on to Gordon's earnest activity and doesn't like he is cracking down on his smuggling rings. In response, Loeb commissions another corrupt cop, known as Flass, to give Gordon a beating. Hey Flass, I have a job for you. I got a feeling I know who this is about. It's Gordon. I had such hopes for that boy. With this latest color, it's a conflict of interest with the man up top. It was bound to happen sooner or later. Jimmy's a boy scout. And boy scouts, <laughs> they just don't fit in. You understand we can't have him risk any of our arrangements. Don't worry, Gil. I'll soften him up. Gordon walks through Halliday Plaza, where he is stopped by a police officer that Gordon recognizes. It's Flass. Flass violently attacks Gordon. But Gordon holds his own, surprising his attacker with his unequivocal strength. However, a cloaked mystery suddenly appears, beating Flass to a bloody pulp, then disappearing as quickly as he appeared. Meanwhile, a mysterious woman named Selena Kyle breaks into an old factory where cats are being manipulated for genetic study. She frees the abused animals and gets into a fight with the scientists there. Before they can overpower her, a gas spreads that knocks them all out. As Selena covers her mouth, she sees a cloak flap through a broken window. She smiles. Back at police headquarters, Gordon is wrapping up a speech about the hunt for the mysterious Batman to a group of police officers. Listen up. I want to address a subject that has been on the minds of many in this city. We are facing a unique challenge. One that has, for some, blurred the lines between law enforcement and vigilantism. I'm here to talk about the mysterious vigilante known as Batman. It's undeniable that the arrival of this caped crusader has created both controversy and chaos in our city. There are those who question his motives, his methods, and his impact on our work as police officers. But I believe it's essential that we, as an institution, confront this challenge head-on in our mission to serve and protect our community. We've seen Batman's actions, and while his approach may be unconventional, there's no doubt that he has done some good. He's forced us to raise our game, to rethink our strategies, and to be more relentless in our pursuit of justice. But here's the bottom line. Batman is not above the law. No one is. I am calling for a comprehensive investigation into the activities of the Batman, to uncover the truth, and to reestablish our commitment to justice. Together, we must demonstrate that no one, not even those who wear capes and masks, is above the law in our city. In layman's terms, we're gonna catch this guy. Any questions? Yes, Essen. What does he look like? Big, black bat. Easy enough? <laughs> Gordon, a word with you. Yes, Commissioner. 
Look, if you don't start caring a little less about work, then hell will come to you. Commissioner, I'm a police officer. I know my job very well, despite most people in Gotham. I don't like what you're implying, Captain. I'm not implying anything, sir. Hey, you call yourself a police officer? You're one of them cowboys, ain't you? Just like that district attorney, Harvey Dent. You don't understand the way things are done around here. See, it's my responsibility to train my officers in the established order of things, to have a proper respect for tradition. I don't live by your traditions, Commissioner. I'm here to serve and protect. Nothing less, nothing more. I suggest you be a little more selective in your manner of speech, Captain. Things could get awfully difficult for you around here. And you don't want that. Not for your lovely wife. What'd you just say? <laughs> You're mine, Gordon. We'll see about that. Later that night at a dinner party, Carmine Falcone, along with the rich and greedy socialites of Gotham, discuss how Batman is keeping the honest cops busy. Suddenly, the window shatters. The room fills with smoke. Batman appears and offers them a grim message. Your days are numbered. Not one of you is safe. Falcone's men start firing. Batman gets away with only a few scratches. In the days that follow, Bruce recovers from the bruises and scratches. His butler, Alfred, expresses his concerns over his vigilante activity. I've seen that look in men's eyes on the battlefield, living on 10 minutes of sleep a day. And it's working, isn't it? It's chasing away the demons. All you want to do is fight on and on. After a while, all you want to do is feel the thrill, the adrenaline burn. I'm not chasing thrills, Alfred. I'm crushing crime, saving lives. What about your own? Have you noticed you no longer refer to Batman as your disguise? You say that as if it's a problem. This is madness. And you're getting lost in it. Madness? Gotham needs me more than ever. It needs hope. What kind of hope is it with you injured? Or worse, there are other ways to help Gotham, to make a difference. They're not enough. The criminals are multiplying. The police can't handle it. You're just one man, sir. You can't solve all of Gotham's problems alone. But your influence can be far-reaching in other ways. I'd urge you to consider your responsibilities to Wayne Enterprises somewhere on your list of problems. They've gotten this far without me. They don't need me. You had quite a sense of humor when you were a little boy. You need it now, sir. The way you're punishing yourself, you'll be dead in six months. Think about what your parents would have wanted. Bruce decides to visit his parents' graves. Standing over their tombstones, he speaks to them. Mom, Dad, it's been so long since that night. But your memory has never left me. You've been my guiding light, even in the darkest of times. Your love, your compassion, your dedication to this city, it lives on in me. I want you to know, I've chosen a path 
one that I hope will honor your legacy. It becomes something more. Something to protect this city from the darkness that took you from me. I've become a symbol. A symbol of hope, justice, and strength. But standing here, talking to your resting souls, I can't help but feel the weight of the promise I've made. The promise to never fail Gotham. Does it fail? You. It's a heavy burden. But it's one I willingly bear. I felt doubt. Fear. And pain. But I'll never let them break me. I won't fail you, Mom and Dad. I'll fight with all I have to keep this city safe. To ensure that no child loses their parents the way I did. I hope that from wherever you are, you can see the path I've chosen and understand why I've taken it. I may falter, I may stumble, but I'll never stop. Because every night, when I don the cape, it's your memory that keeps me going. And it's your memory that reminds me never to fail. Never to give up. Never to let Gotham down. But if I do fail, then I can't wait to be with you. Meanwhile, Gordon, sent by an angry Commissioner Loeb, is investigating the identity of the mysterious Batman. Harvey Dent. Captain James Gordon, with the GCPD. I hate to take up your time, but I was wondering if you could help me with something. Of course, come on in. You're the one on the Batman case, right? That's what I'm here about. This guy knows when and where we set our traps for him. Night by night, he terrorizes the most powerful men in Gotham. Some believe he might be a vigilante in our own ranks. What are you driving at, Captain? I need to know where you were on the following dates. You're kidding me. You think I'm the Batman? My wife will love this! Hey, you're young. You work out. And I've seen your record. You have no love of organized crime. I've seen you try to go after the Roman. Yeah. Well, he's still on the streets, isn't he? If I was the vigilante, the Roman would be making license plates right now, not running Gotham's criminal empire. Yeah, it must be frustrating. Look, you know how it is. I need to account for your whereabouts during these sightings. Sorry, Captain. I was in DC at a convention for three of these dates, and my wife will tell you I was home with her for most of the rest. I'm not your Batman. Wish I was, but I'm not. After interrogating Gotham's district attorney, Harvey Dent, Gordon resolves that he's not their man and leaves, ruling him out as a suspect. However, the real Batman follows Gordon from a distance. Gordon and his partner, Sarah Essen, are driving their car when they almost hit a woman. Gordon, watch out! Gordon slams the brakes and tries to swerve out of the way but he's about to hit the woman when Batman rushes in and saves her. Gordon and Essen pursue the Batman, and the two corner him in a construction site. He's over here! This way, Gordon! Come out with your hands up! Soon after, police swarm the area and Commissioner Loeb orders a bomb to be dropped on the building. Then the SWAT team flies in, searching for Batman. They chase him through the rubble. Bullets fly through the air. But Batman summons a swarm of bats to attack everyone outside the building. escapes.
Selena Kyle, having witnessed the construction site battle, designs a suit for herself. She heads out, ready for adventure and some fun, but mostly theft. Her first score is at Commissioner Loeb's residence. Catwoman, aka Selena, breaks into his house and begins stealing valuable jewels and statues. Batman arrives and the two fight. Gordon enters as well, having tracked Batman. A three-way battle begins. Batman helps Catwoman escape the building. We seem to keep bumping into each other. First the factory, now the commissioner's place. People are gonna think we're partners. Don't fantasize. We're on opposite sides. Of the same coin? If you wanted to arrest me, you could have just left me with the cops. You are in the crossfire. Oh, so you're what? A hero in a mask? Better than being a common thief. Hey, in Gotham, sometimes you have to steal to survive. You took a few jewels and a couple of statues. Something tells me you can survive without them. Give them back. I intend to. I'm serious. I didn't come all this way for nothing. Just be grateful you're still alive. You don't understand. It's not for me. Then who's it for? It's for the East End. The East End. Yeah, the East End. You have any idea how it's like over there? Or do you just go there to take out the trash? You expect me to think you did this for charity? Oh, like you beat up criminals out of the goodness of your heart, please. You didn't grow up there. Nothing to eat. Fending for yourself when you're just a kid. It was like that then, and it's like that now. All these years, nothing's changed. Because Commissioner Loeb and the Roman keep it that way. Maybe I just want to even the playing field now, take from the ones with too much, and give to the ones with too little. Robin Hood in a cat suit. Something like that. I was gonna take the loot and pawn it, give the money to the people there. Listen. I know how it's like to want to protect those who can't protect themselves. But sometimes, it's not about the path you choose. It's how you choose to walk it. There are other ways to help the East End than stealing. Sure, but they're not as fun, are they? I can't keep letting you do this in my city. A challenge, is it? I accept. Because I've got a feeling the only way I'm ever going to see you again is to commit another crime. I wouldn't recommend that. You didn't do so well in your debut. Yeah. Well, practice makes perfect. Before she leaves, the two costume figures share a kiss. Oh, and thanks for giving my loot back. What? First round goes to me, lover. first round to you, but there'll be another. Before Batman disappears, Gordon finds him. I know you're there, Captain Gordon. You know who I am. I know who's hunting me. Stay where you are. I don't want to hurt you. You won't have to. See, I'm putting my gun on the ground. Look, you know I'm assigned to bring you in, but it's not by choice. I saw you save that woman the other night. I know you're just trying to help this city. Then stay out of my way. Hey, wait! The Dark Knight ignores him and leaves, but a piece of his suit with the Wayne Enterprises logo is left behind. Gordon as his next suspect. The following day, 
Bruce Wayne is training when Alfred arrives to inform him that Captain Gordon is there to see him. Where were you last night, Mr. Wayne? I was here. You can ask my butler. Is that so? This was left by the Batman last night. It has the logo of your company on it. Wayne Enterprises! You understand this directly connects you to the Vigilante? Actually, it doesn't. How do you figure? That's Nomex fire-resistant material. Wayne Enterprises manufactures and sells it globally. It's used by the military, SWAT, and even cops. Any number of people could have gotten their hands on this stuff. I assure you, I have no connection to Batman. It's not just the fabric, Mr. Wayne. There are records of large financial transactions from Wayne Enterprises that coincide with Batman's appearance. Captain, Wayne Enterprises is a vast company. Financial transactions happen all the time, often without my direct knowledge. I can't be responsible for every dollar spent. You're not exactly what you seem, are you, Mr. Wayne? The vigilante shows up, and suddenly, you start funding all these initiatives. And you're never around when Batman is on the scene. You're giving me far too much credit. I can't even manage my own company efficiently. Let alone go out as a crime-fighting vigilante. So, you're saying it's all a coincidence? Look, I've always been a strong supporter of law and order, both in my public and private life. I've put my resources into numerous initiatives to make Gotham safer. Why would I jeopardize that by moonlighting as a vigilante? Okay, Mr. Wayne. Maybe I believe you. Maybe I don't. But between you and me, I just want to find this guy. I'm not looking to arrest him. I just want to talk to him. From what it sounds like, Captain, he doesn't seem to want to talk to you. Oh, he's been making that pretty clear already. It's just that. I don't think he realizes it yet. But he needs help. You're not wrong. A guy who dresses up like a bat clearly needs therapy. I'm not talking about that kind of help. The truth is, Gotham's been overrun by crime for too long. We need someone who isn't afraid to take the law into their own hands when the system fails. I think he's that someone. Deep down, we both want the same thing. All I want to tell him is, he doesn't have to do this alone. I wish there was more I could do for you, Captain. I really do. But if it's any consolation, I'm sure if the Batman heard you offer him help, he'd consider it. Two weeks later, Bruce is in an old cavern where he is slowly designing a cave. The Bat Cave. It appears we have our work cut out for us. This place will need significant renovation. It'll do, Alfred. As you've seen, my gear's outgrowing the space in the manor. But down here, I could put in a full-size lab, a gym, maybe some of that computer equipment. And a reflecting pool, perhaps. The one at the Taj Mahal is nice. How long have you known about this cavern? Since I was four, that's how I fell through that hole in the yard. I landed right here. I was terrified. Funny how things come together. Well to avoid another intruder falling in the same way. We'll need to ensure it's fully concealed. A secret entrance, perhaps, to keep our operations confidential. Agreed. We can't afford any breaches. Master Wayne, I know this project is essential for your mission, but do remember who you are. Alfred, I know who I am. I'm the Batman. I should have known you'd say that. A short time later, Catwoman is making her next big score, the Roman's Penthouse. However, this time it gets worse as she is chased by Falcone's men. 
They move throughout the penthouse, chasing Catwoman. Batman arrives and battles Falcone's men, taking them down one by one. Meanwhile, Catwoman encounters Carmine Falcone and uses her claws to scar his face before making her escape. Commissioner Loeb and Falcone meet to discuss how Gordon seems to be cleaning up Gotham too much. What's up with your face, Falcone? My cat got angry. Now, back to business. Commissioner, we've always had an understanding. You help me, and I make sure your retirement fund is nice and healthy. But there are a few thorns in our side now. One is this Captain Gordon. He's like a dog with a bone, relentless. Then there's this Batman character. I told you, I took care of both problems at once. Gordon's distracted now, hunting down that nut job in a Halloween costume. No, not distracted enough. I have a plan to get rid of both Gordon and Batman. While Gordon is walking with his wife and daughter, Barbara, they are suddenly surrounded by Falcone and his men. Bullets begin flying, and Barbara is kidnapped. Gordon takes a motorbike and chases their car through the streets. Batman shows up and promises Mrs. Gordon to rescue her daughter. Don't worry. I'll get your daughter. Falcone's men crash at one of the bridges, and a fight ensues. Batman comes and stops them. Falcone gets away, but finds himself cornered by Catwoman. The two battle. Finally, Catwoman knocks him out before leaving. Batman and Gordon find Falcone, and Gordon arrests him. You're under arrest. Batman, you can go. You've done enough for this city. What about your task force? I'm giving them Falcone instead. It's the least I can do for you, saving my family. You're risking your career, Captain. I know. It's what I tried telling you on the rooftop that night. We want the same thing. You didn't know that then, but something tells me you learned it later. That's why you're here. I'm willing to help, but I operate outside. I'm not asking you to stop that. Just that we work together. For a safer Gotham. What do you say? If you see me again, you'll know my answer. It's the end of the year, and bullets are flooding through Gotham Reservoir chasing after a madman using a speedboat. Gordon shouts to his officers. Stop him! Before he poisons the reservoir! The maniac turns his head, revealing his large, evil grin. Then, Gordon grins as well, as a dark figure dives in over his head. It's Batman. This audio drama is brought to you by Nuverse Creative, based on an unproduced film treatment and adapted by Ben Wong and Tim Maxwell. 
Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger based on characters appearing in DC Comics.